Hello, this is In Conversations with Hannah. I'm Hannah Weisberg, editor of the JewishWoman.org. And I'm here with a very special guest tonight uh, that we're interviewing. Her name is Rosie Grossbaum. Hi, Rosie. Hello. Okay, so Rosie is probably the youngest uh, person who I've interviewed in my In Conversations with Hannah. And as if you've been watching, you know that all our conversations are with incredible people. And Rosie is just... I was just so blown away by hearing Rosie and hearing how she deals with her situation, her circumstances, and the maturity and the wisdom and perspective that she gives. You know, sometimes it takes people a long time to gain a certain wisdom. It takes age. Usually with age, we gain wisdom. And yet Rosie is so young and yet so wise beyond her years. And I'm sure that you are going to love hearing from her as well. So hi, Rosie. <laughs> no pressure. Well, Rosie, thank you so much for joining us. This is again in Conversations with Hana, and we're so pleased to have you here with us. Rosie, can you tell us a little about yourself? Um, tell us what you, what you are, what you do. Um, so I'm 17, and I'm in 12th grade, so senior year. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Dance. Um, that's I nice. like to stay active. Um, I don't know. Sounds People, good. I like to interact. I like to anything artsy, anything creative, and uh, different things like that. Basic, mostly dancing, though. That's where. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. Um, so Rosie was actually diagnosed with a, a condition that's called cystic fibrosis. And tell us when you, this is a potentially life-threatening uh, condition. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little about what cystic fibrosis is? Um, so it's a genetic disease that I was diagnosed when I was, I think like, well, they knew when I was born that I had it, but like they like officially diagnosed me when I was two weeks old, I think. <laughs> um, I, I've had it my whole life, so I don't actually know when it was. But some people find out like later, usually within like the first few years, um, it's a little complicated, like I don't fully get it, but, um, the mucus in my lungs and different things like that is like pretty thick and stuff. So bacteria likes to get stuck, um, which can cause me to get sick, um, which causes the lungs to deteriorate. So then they don't work as well. Um, but this, like the mucus also gets like in, in the pancreas and like different things like that. So like doesn't produce enzymes and different things. So like. It's like the whole digestive tract and the lungs, basically all of it. Wow. Okay. So it's probably, there's like a, for sure, like a better, like actual <laughs> medical way that you can describe it. I, th I think you did great. I think you did great. You made us all understand it. So I think you did amazing. So you were diagnosed with that when you were young. How has that affected your life? Like, do you need to do any special therapies, medicine, treatments? What, what do you need to do? Yeah. I do um, respiratory therapy two times a day. Um, I basically put on this like vest that like goes G -g -g -g, like it shakes me. Um, and I also have a nebulizer that um, clears my system and makes sure that nothing gets stuck. Because the problem is when like when mucus gets stuck, bacteria can also get stuck. And then when it gets stuck in dark places, it likes to grow and, you know, get comfortable. So that's what we try to avoid. And the vest like shakes it off and making sure that everything is moving and going through smoothly. Uh, I have to take enzymes before I eat um, because my body can't produce those themselves. So I have to, you know, take it by mouth every time I eat anything with like fat or protein, uh, anything that's not like fluff. You know? <clears throat> um, I take other medicines. I have to take vitamin supplements, like regular, you know, like like people get like vitamin D from like the sun or like different things like that. Like people take like, you know, like regular amounts. I have to take like a lot more because I have like a deficiency in that. Um, a lot of people with cystic fibrosis um, can get what's called CF. I don't know. It's like basically CF caused diabetes. I don't know what the actual scientific name is, but it's like not like type one or type two. It's like its own category. So I have to like make sure every few, every year I have to take a glucose test to make sure that my, numbers are in check hmm. um they actually recently came out with the new medicine called trikafta it used to be that there weren't really any cures or anything to keep 
cystic fibrosis in check. So a lot of people would pass away really young. Uh, most people wouldn't make it into adulthood. But now they're making massive strides to, you know, helping people live longer and healthier. So this is a, that medicine was a really big breakthrough. Um, That's amazing. It, yeah, it like slows down the progression of the symptoms. I mean, it doesn't like, obviously it doesn't like cure it, but it helps keep things under control for the most part. Mm -hmm. Tries. Wow. You know. wow. Do you know anyone who passed away when they were young? Like were any, any people yeah. who you were, how did, how did that make you feel? Um, I didn't know them so personally, but it was like, whoa, like I saw them in person. I right. good. Wow. Um, but it, you nowadays people like, you know, live a lot longer mm -hmm. uh, than like, you know, 20 and 30. But I, I don't know, they were, I guess, in like a really um, interesting situation. It was, they were going through a really tough time. They had it like, they were always in the hospital and like, always like coming down with different things and yeah, they were like very, very young, like 22. Or like wow. wow. So how do you feel about taking all those therapies and all those medicines and all those things that you need to do? Um, I don't mind doing it. Just a matter of if I remember it or not. Okay. <laughs> because a lot of times I get home and I'm exhausted. Because sure. apparently I don't, I haven't really experienced this, I guess, thank God, but Apparently CF can make you really tired. And it's only like hit like this week where I've been like, I'm going to bed on time. I'm waking up, I'm getting like seven to eight hours a night. And yet I'm bombed, like right. exhausted. So you get home and you're like, oh my gosh, like I cannot think of even getting up and doing it now. But mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And did you start dancing because of you wanted yeah. to be active? Is that part of? Yeah. Because my mother wanted to make sure, I started when I was three. My mother wanted to make sure that um, my like lungs were staying active because that's one of the best things that you can do. Like it seems kind of ironic because people with CF like seem like they don't have sh like as strong lungs as everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yet it's super important that we stay active so that we can keep them as strong. And because the more you use it, the more the stronger it gets. So a lot of people, there's actually like um, an organization that specifically like gives grants to people with cystic fibrosis so that they have like enough money to like exercise. Because mm -hmm. it's a massive um, factor in staying strong and healthy. Wow, interesting. So I, I was watching you. Um, you gave a, a talk, I think this past summer for High Lifeline, yeah. where you spoke to. There was a, a huge group. Like, was it a thousand people? A crowd of a thousand people. Yeah, a lot and, of other hundred men. I mean, sorry? I, it was like it was for the bikeathon. So there were like a bunch of riders and then like a few of their family members came. So it was like 1500. Wow. Wow. A lot of people. And right. you spoke with such confidence that okay. I, it blew me away. And in front of this group, you said something about um, how the neshama within every Jew and the endless power each one has, despite our physical limitations, you spoke about the infinite power inside of us how we're all a piece of Hashem, literally nothing can hold us back. How do you like feel about this when you go through a hardship? Like, how do you remember this? Um, I guess when you're told something enough times or when you think about it enough, it kind of just becomes the way that you see everything. It's not even the way that you see it. It's just the way that you, you so when you just have that way of thinking and the way of like looking at the world, it kind of just, that's how it like translates and doesn't even necessarily need to be in like, you know, like CF kinds of things. Cause like, thank God I'm doing pretty well. And I haven't been in the hospital for a long time. So it's more like regular everyday things that it's just like, ugh, like that was super annoying or like, wow, I can't believe I messed up so bad. And it's just like, but wait, just take a second and like, just like keep yourself focused on who you actually are and all those kind of things. It's not necessarily like, has to be like that these things can be applied even to like regular everyday things so, so give I, us so give us a window into your what your perspective so something really lousy happens or you're going through a real really difficult challenge whether it's cf or anything in life what do you what do you say to yourself or what do you what what's your perspective that you want to share with us um well things in life don't just happen and if they are like the way that I think of it, because a lot of times they're like, you're like anxious about things, you get stressed, and you're like, oh, I can't believe I didn't study enough, or I can't believe I made that decision, or what if I don't get in, or what if they don't like me, or what if I don't get accepted? And 
everything that like anything that obviously you have to have like trust and belief that for the future everything is going to work out just the way that we want it and Hashem is obviously going to do it because he you know all that stuff about Batachim but but the things that happened things don't just happen if it happened it was obviously supposed to be that way so if I didn't get the greatest mark in, on my test or if I didn't get accepted into that thing or whatever it is it wouldn't have just happened by any chance obviously Hashem wanted it that way and that is the way that it has to be and I think it's just for me it's a way of like letting go and like not like blaming myself for things that have happened because it's very easy to like blame yourself wow I like made such a bad mistake that time and like you feel so guilty about it where obviously you have to take responsibility and like make sure that you're not going like take the steps to make sure that you're going to try to be better from now on but you can't blame yourself for all those things because it's not going to help you move forward it happened if it wasn't supposed to happen it just never would have happened so it's just i guess a really big stress reliever for me to just know that i shouldn't be blaming myself for these things because it's the way that it's supposed to be otherwise it would not have been that way so i think it's very calming to be able wow. to so it's just meant to be yeah then- just the and it's the best way that it should be it's not only meant to be it's anything that happens i was actually i was in like tanya like in during the summer i actually wrote it down like the day that i don't remember what date it was but i saved it because it was basically talking about how um everything is created yesh um everything is created something from nothing but the thing is is that it's everything is created from hashem how can we say that everything is yesh from nothing um and it was tanya was explaining Walter was explaining that ayin means from what we can't comprehend, it was—it's not understandable, which is basically Hashem's chachma. And then the Altarba continued to say that anything that comes from Hashem's chachma is good, and it can chachma only, means wisdom. So anything that comes from God's wisdom, like that top, that like the highest level in Hashem's, you know, um, anything that comes from that part, anything that comes from Hashem's chachma is good, and it can only be good. Nothing bad can come from there. So if everything is created yeshmeiyan, then nothing in this world can be can be bad. Nothing can come from Hashem's Chachma as bad. And so that means anything that anything that's hard, any any of those things, they're all still come from Hashem's Chachma because everything comes from there. So it's just like a, it's like such a, like a mind twist where you're like, whoa, like, yeah, it doesn't take away from the fact that it's painful or hard, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. So it's, something it, could be painful or hard, but that's not bad. It comes from God, so it must be good. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's pretty, uh, that's a pretty high level to, to feel. Do you ever feel like, do you ever feel angry at God? Like, why did you do this to me? No. <laughs> why not? Pain is not really something that's ever avoidable. I mean, like no pain, no gain. Like that's the saying, the harder that you, like when you're at, when someone's at the gym or they're running, you, if you're not feeling pain, that means that you're not, your muscles aren't strengthening. Um, so, when you just, but like, even like when like you, like when I look at it this way, like, yeah, obviously I feel like a little bit of like, like uncomfortability, but when I like rethink and like refocus, it's like, wait, like it kind of like takes that, you know, like, I think for me personally, I, I, I'm like, it's, I feel like it's a hard thing, like saying this, like people who might've gone through, like, they're like so much harder. I don't know. Cause like, for me, it feels like I haven't like, it just feels like, okay. Like it's like fine when I went through, like, it just didn't feel as painful just knowing that so like well i don't think everyone would think it's fine what you went through i mean you go through this condition on a daily basis and you just went through you just explained to us a lot of the treatments and the therapies that you go through so i don't think a lot of people would think that that's fine what you go through and yet you i guess i've got used to it at this point that i'm just like it's just part of part of life and it's just part of like being that unique you because you know, I have uh, part of CF is that it's also very hard to like maintain like, um, like to like get calories and to, um, and to like grow and to gain weight. So you have to have like a very high calorie diet and make sure that you're eating enough. And so you're getting the nutrients that you need. And they always monitor your weight to make sure that you're like staying steady because, um, one of the signs of like not good lung function and an infection is weight loss that you just no matter how much you eat you just still losing weight because your body's fighting so hard to like fight off those infections so as a kid and as now i had a feeding tube so that i can get extra nutrients 
And like as a kid, like when I, I would go to ballet and wear the like leotard, and I'd be like, what's that? And the ballet teacher's like, you can't ask her that. And I used to like not like it. I always wanted it out and I they didn't want it. And I was like, just take it out, just take it out. And then as I got older, I'm like, wait, like this is so cool. It's so unique. Like most people don't just have like a hole in their stomach. Okay, it's not actually a hole, but like <laughs> most people don't have these kind of things. Like I guess everything, I mean, it's with everything in life, when you just change the way that you look at these things, it completely changes the way that you feel about them. So now it's like, no, you can't take it out. Like, it's special. Like, you have to keep it in there. So I guess that, that it can be with everything. When you, so just, you, you could take any challenge that you have and just reframe it and say, this is what makes me unique and this is what makes me special, that God has given me this challenge. Like, your feeding tube has become something special to you. Yeah, and like white hair, like I could technically say, oh, I hate it. It's something that I love. I want to change. It. You know, it's like anything. Obviously, you don't like. Obviously, we ask such time to like stop because like some things are enough. But you know, looking back, I would never have asked for anything to change. I wouldn't have asked for it any other way. Wow. Do you ever ask for Hashem to change things around? Um, I kind of just asked for like, you know. Me personally, I'm just like, it doesn't necessarily bother me yet <laughs> that I have CF because I'm like, I'm like, thank God I'm doing well and like, I don't necessarily feel it. Um, but I feel like, you know, like, when I see other people who are going through something hard, I kind of ask for, you know, for them because I just, when it's something that you're going through, I feel like for me personally, like, let's say like with COVID, right? I like, obviously, my mother did not want me to get COVID, and obviously, I didn't want to because we didn't know how, like, you know, lungs and everything, you don't really want to play around. But like, I was more worried for like my great grandmother if she would go off get COVID. Maybe it's just like me thing, but I feel like I get more like worried and feel more like scared for like people because I guess I'm just used to it and kind mm -hmm. of okay with it. Um, so like, if I'm asking Hashem for anything, it's more like for like, you know, that people should be okay or that certain situation just because like, I don't feel like it's, like, you know, something that, like, I would complain about. Wow. Wow. So you have such compassion for other people, um, for what they're going through, and yet you never feel that way about yourself. You never feel like your hardships. You just kind of take it in stride. I mean, like, thank God I haven't been, I mean, I don't think I've been tested, like, you know, too hard, thank God, yet. Um like Baruch Hashem, the last time I was in the hospital when I was nine, was when I was nine, and now I'm 17. So Baruch wow. Hashem, that. Um, How long were you in the hospital for? Two weeks. Two weeks. And what was that like? Honestly, I remember it being fun. <laughs> okay. But they did a really good job entertaining me. But at the same time, I do remember them coming in to like take blood work or something. And I remember like the before asking, asking my mother, if the time before that was going to be the last time they were coming to take blood work. And my mother's like, yeah, for sure, last time. And they came back in. I'm like, but you said they weren't going to come in again. Oh, so I, I... Even though I have, like, very fond memories of, like, them making it fun. And, and like, because, like, that's, they have, like, special jobs for that now. Like, making sure that the kids, you know, are entertained and they have people visiting them. And they have, like, you know, things for them to do. So it just makes the experience a lot more pleasant, but there, I, I, even though I don't remember it so well, there were for sure times where I was like, I don't like this. Yeah, for sure. Wow. But that was when you're nine years old. Yeah. Or eight. I think I was turning. So, uh -huh. our Hashem. Have you always had such a positive attitude? Like what, what helps you to have such a positive outlook? Um, I, I mean, like I was born on period. <laughs> My name is, Frida. I think it's kind of like, been like programmed in me since I was a kid but as a kid I never really realized any like severity of any of the situation like I never like really heard about anybody who had it like, I knew in theory yeah people had it but I didn't know like the dangers of it because my a lot of times in the past what would happen is the doctors would come in and they tell the parents so your child has like 20 years to live 30 years and then that parent the parents would like pass that message on to their children like when I was born, my doctors were like, we're going to help you keep your child as healthy and healthy and strong. And we're going to make sure that she lives until adulthood. I don't know what they told them. But basically, they had like a very like 
positive attitude also. They're like, we're, we're, our job is to keep you healthy and to keep you as strong as possible. It was never like we're putting a time limit on, you know, to start the clock mm-hmm. now. This is how much you have left. I hear like a lot of like people speaking from when they're like, now they're like 30 or 40. And you hear the doctors were like, so your kid has like, you know, 20 more years. Like that was their attitude towards it. Mm-hmm. And I think my doctors came in with a very good attitude, which kind of translated to my parents, which translated to me which just like keeps like the whole outlook. So I never really understood as a kid that there was such a thing as like, you know, people with cystic fibrosis passing away young. I was just like, Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. It's just part of life, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, and then as I got older, I kind of heard more, (laughs) looked up things I probably shouldn't have. It wasn't so bad, but like other people like talking about cystic fibrosis and I was like, whoa, I not, (laughs) I, I always heard in my head, but I never was like, oh, wow. Like, Oh, maybe it is something, but you know, like Baruch Hashem. I'm and how did you feel when you found out how how severe it is, or how? how... Like, oh, that's cool. Like <laughs> we're unique. Really? It wasn't like because like, it was like far from me. So I was like, it's okay. We'll be okay. Hashem will keep us safe and keep me protected. That's amazing. I love your attitude. I love your spirit. It's just so amazing to hear. You know, I, and I don't necessarily have the same. Attitude. I'm like, I wish I could just pass it on, but like, you know, it's it's a lot of like more stressless way to go through everything. So stress. Do you wish you could pass on what the stressless attitude? Yeah, like just the. It's okay, you know. It's okay. Are you like that with everything? Is that your attitude about like in life in general? I life in general, but for time I get a little bit. What's the word? Um, um, what's the word? Stressed? No, like, we gotta do it this way. Oh, but, there um, you go. Not convincing, but I like to, um, you like to do things. I'm sorry for a second. We're here with Rosie Grossman, and I'm just blown away by her attitude. Sorry, go ahead, Rosie. I'm sorry, my brothers came down and were making no worry. Um, I no, like I like I like to like make sure that things are done right, and Mm -hmm. I forgot what the not opinionated, but I don't know what the word is. But so yeah, I like I like to be like a little carefree, but then sometimes I'm like, God, we gotta make sure it's done right, you know, like that kind of attitude. Right. But it's so you don't seem like you like that with others, though. You seem like you're very tolerant to others. I try to be. I I really do. Right. Amazing. Wow. Do you ever get Do you ever get anxious? Do you ever get Do you have anxiety ever about anything? Usually about tests and quizzes. Yes. <laughs> and how do you? Ha- <laughs> I, I failed. I screwed it so bad. And I'm like Rosie. Okay, <laughs> take a breather. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, I, you also spoke, you said, when you spoke, and I, I want to quote you, because I also thought this was just so beautiful. You said, in life, the only thing that lasts forever are positive things that we have done for ourselves and for others. Godliness is the only thing that lasts forever. Can you elaborate on that? I really like that. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, I can because a lot of times, me personally, I, I get, I used to get like very stuck on the things that I like made mistakes in on the past. Like, wow, I was not very nice to her or I messed up big time where I did this, I did that. And I learned from them and I try to be better for them, but I still like get stuck and even anything else, like you just like, I got stuck in it and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I did that. Like, and like, I'm such a, ter- like, not, I didn't say I'm such a terrible person, but I kind of felt like I'm such a terrible person, you know, like, I can't believe like, like me, Rosie could have messed up like that. And then when you actually think about it, really the only thing that does last is Kedusha, because the only reason that there is such a concept of Kedusha death. Kedusha meaning holiness. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. The only reason that there is a concept of death in the world is that the, like the, like the klipa and the things that are negative are things that can't last forever. The, the the neshama, the soul, is what 
like lives on forever and what and so the things that you do the the holiness and the godliness and the kindness that you do for other people and for the world at large and whatever all those things is the only thing that actually lasts hmm. so if you're gonna look at it in the in the you know in the long run uh yes i might have slipped up yes i might have really messed up big time but you you learn from it and that's not going to last forever those things don't last mm. that's not the part of you that that will continue on right absolutely wow um you you also said when we can align our mindset in a godly way we can see that everything is good god gave me whatever he gave me because he believes in me and loves me how do you uh, how do you see that? I think it's kind of I I was before is that it's just when you when you take all these things that you learn. So many girls in my class and so many girls in school they're like, yeah, but how do you make it practical? And I always want to sit them down and say, guys, the only way it's ever going to be practical is for you to find a way yourself. A teacher can't tell you. Nobody can tell you how you can make it practical because the way that it's going to affect your life is the only only you can figure that out. So for me, I actually figured out that when I speak about Hasidus and all these things, that's when it really becomes so like engraved in my mind that it's something that I live through. And that when that happens, that's when you just see the world like that. That's just everything is like that. So anything that happens, like as we were saying before, you just see it in that way, through that light. And everything kind of just falls into place when you can see it that way. So it's been Hasidic teachings has been formulating your, your perspective on life. Is that what you're saying? 100%. <laughs> 100%. Wow. And that's what's given you such a positive outlook and such an outlook that everything is is for the good. Yeah, for sure. What's your favorite Hasidic teaching? Or idea or thought? Sure, I like to like mix it because I mean the first of all the concept of in Movade that there's nothing but Hashem is just massive because that means that every person that you meet, anything that happens is all just the one Hashem. It's all just Hashem, which means it's absolute goodness. So even if there are people who rub you the wrong way or things that happen, those are all still just complete goodness. Just sometimes we just can't see it that way because they're from such a high source. So that itself is just like, boom, just like realize that everything is just the one Hashem. And then the fact that everything happens, that everything happens by like Hashem's specific guidance and watch, is also just incredible because things don't just happen to you because oh she was spacing out and boom now this person is sick god forbid or you know that i got cf or that i did this or that i got that on my test or you know that i got this pair of shoes like things like that don't just happen so it's just incredible to like obviously you have to take responsibility for the actions that we might have not you know you know, things that we have to grow from, but we just look back. It's just, you know, just the, it's all is everything, which is it's all divine the, providence. It's all from God, which I guess goes intertwined with in Mavada, that there's nothing but him. It's just because even when we do slip up just to like, look at it that way, as we're all still a piece of Hashem, like that mistake, that thing doesn't take away from that fact, which is so cool. I think. And I think that's amazing. Look at it. You, you also don't see yourself as lim limited because you, you said something about having that soul. And when you have a soul, it's it's unlimited. Yeah. You know, well, when you have this feel held back by all those things that they can and can't do. Like, you know, like, say, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an example. But, you know, everybody feels like held back by things that they can and can't do. And just to realize that you're much more things that are trying to stop you. You just have, you can just like raise above it and just raise beyond it and become such a special and amazing person, regardless of those. Like you have, you use your abilities and your talents to be able to just go higher and higher. Because hmm. the thing you can't do is not what matters, it's what you can do and add to the world that is so powerful. Wow. 
And you can do that with your unique self because of your, your challenges. You look at yourself as very unique rather than challenged. Yeah, for sure. Like that feeding tube. It's it's like, wow, it's unique, right? Yeah. <laughs> like what you said. Imagine life without it. Like, what would be the <laughs> thing? It would just be a plain old stomach. <laughs> wow. Wow. Rosie, any 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 th thoughts on what your plans are for the future or any dreams or hopes that you wish you have? Um, I, a lot of people ask that. Where are you going to seminary? What <laughs> Do the job, and I'm like, I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> wow. But I want to, you know, make an impact. I want, you know, leave like, you know, an imprint. Um, an imprint on this world. But I first have to think of really innovative idea before I can go do that. You know, I don't know how some of these people, you know, like, like Khan Academy. Like, who thought we're gonna take every single subject? And then we're going to explain every single subject. Now, every single kid who has any question can come and boom, learn it right there. Who thought of that? <laughs> like, that is a massive idea. And it's yep. changed the, like, face of everything. Like, any of these big projects, I'm like, whoa, who's the mind behind that? Like, I wish I had a mind like that. I think you should talk about like ideas in, in Hasidus. I think that you're amazing with, like, conveying how you can live practically these ideas. Thank you. <laughs> I think you'd be amazing with that. <laughs> wow. Rosie, how many how many children are in your family? Four. Can I have and and your parents have this positive perspective as well? I, mean, I had to get it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, is there something that you're looking forward to in the near future? Mm -hmm. Nothing specific. Um, every day you bring something new. So, wow. I, I don't actually have, I don't know. So when you go through a, like a difficulty and you're going through your, you know, some kind of treatment or something, you tell yourself what? Okay. It's okay. It'll be okay. Cool. Like, whoa, Not whoa. only is it okay, it's cool. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and if it hurts and if it's painful, you tell yourself that. Look at you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's like, wow. Amazing. Wow. Thank you so much, Rosie. Thank I'm joined with by Rosie Grossbaum, who is, how old are you? 17 years old? Yeah. And Rosie, I can't wait to interview you in another, I don't know how many years, because the wisdom that you have at a seven, as a 17-year-old is incredible. And I think that you have so much to share with the world on how to look at things, how to look at how to find perspective, how to look at life and the maturity that you give to, uh, to us today is really can be life changing. Your perspective is unbelievable. I just wish that you stay healthy and well and continue growing in all ways. And um, really, uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight and for sharing your perspective. I think it's a perspective that all of us can um can try to do so the next time something happens just say it's okay right and not only is it okay but rosie says it's actually a good thing it's a gift it makes you different it makes you unique i love that the entire time he doesn't he doesn't leave he doesn't have other places to go. this is where he is specifically because wow. he wants you so and if god wants you then if god is good it's everything that does god does is good so it's got to be good and even if it feels painful, then it's still, still, still Hashem. Still God. Okay. It's like the story of like the father and the boy, and they're walking on the beach, and they see the footprints, and all of a sudden there's only one. And the little boy's like, "Where did he go? Like, how did it look? The father left." And he's like, "No, the father is carrying him on his shoulders." Right, and you feel God carrying you on His shoulders. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us, Rosie. G good luck with the next test. Stay healthy and well and keep up that amazing spirit and perspective on life. Thank you, Thank you so much.